hello students welcome to my channel engineers academy let's solve this problem in this problem it is said that calculate the forces in member cb right so this is that cb member and cg and fg right so we have to find the forces in these three members of this given truss right and it is said that uh, calculate the forces in, in these members without first calculating the forces in any other members right so we have to find the forces in all these uh, three members right but as we can see that this uh, truss is subjected to this load this weight and here we have this motor right so this motor will develop a tension in this rope right so what we will do is that we will pass a cutting section from these three uh, members right we will pass a cutting section like this and then we will consider this left hand side of this cutting section we will consider this upper part of this given truss right but as we can see that hence uh, this rope uh, will have the tension forces right so these pulleys are subjected to external loads right so these external loads will induce the reactions at this point c and d right so then we have to find first the reaction at this joint c and d due to these loads right so for that i will consider these pulleys one by one right so if we consider the free body diagram of this lower pulley to which this uh, weight is attached right so let me isolate this right so then we will have the tension force in this rope and we will have the tension force in this rope so let's say that this is t and this is also t right and if we isolate this so then the tension in this lower cable will be equal to the weight of this block right so it has a mass of 2000 kg so the weight is if we multiply 2000 with 9.81 so it is 96620 newtons right so we can write that this is 9.62 kilo newton right so now if we apply the summation of forces along y uh, for this pulley right and let's say that this is our positive x and positive y direction right so if if i apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero on this free body diagram right so we can say that 2t minus 19.62 kilonewton this is equal to zero so from this t equals to 19.62 divided by 2 right so this will be equal to 9.81 kilonewton now after this what i will do is that i will consider the free body diagram of this pulley right so let me draw this pulley right so let's say that this is the pulley at that uh, joint d right so let's say that here we have that joint d right so now as we can see that there are uh, tensions forces right so the tension in this cable will be equal to this t right so it will be acting vertically downward now right so let me represent that so let's say that we have that t here right so this will be how much this is 9.81 this is known 9.81 kilonewton similarly we will have another tension force right which will be acting vertically downward right and this is also equal to t right so this is again this is 9.81 kilonewton and similarly there is one another tension so now uh, as this rope is continuous rope so if this rope is having uh, 9.81 kilonewton so then the tension in this rope is also equal to 9.81 kilonewton since this is one single rope right so now as we can see that there will be some reaction forces developed at this uh, center of this pulley right at this joint d so let's say that we have this one reaction force which is acting in this direction let's say that this is dx and there will be one reaction which will be acting vertically upward so let's say that this is dy right so these are the reactions due to these external forces on this pulley right so then if i apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero since this pulley is in equilibrium right due to these external forces and these reactions right so if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero so then as we can see that this dy is acting in the positive y direction so we will write dy minus this 9.81 and minus this 9.81 equals to zero 
So then this dy will be equal to the summation of this which is again this is 19.62 kilonewton, right? So now we will write that this dy is equal to 19.62 kilonewton, right? And now if we apply, if we want to find this dx, so then the summation of forces along x equals to 0. If we apply to this free body diagram, so then this dx is acting in the negative x direction. So I will write minus dx and this 9.81 is acting in the positive x. So I will write plus 9.81 and this will be equal to 0. So from this we can write that dx is equal to 9.81 kilo newton, right? So now the reaction at point D in the x direction due to these external forces is equal to 9.81 kilo newton, right? So we can write that this is 9.81 kilo newton, right? So now this dx and dy are the reaction on the pulley, right? Due to these external loads, right? So these reaction will apply the force on this given truss, right? So the reaction of this pulley on this given truss will be in the opposite direction, right? So we can say that we will have reactions on the truss due to this pulley in the opposite direction, right? So the reaction at D on this truss will be in this opposite direction and its magnitude will be equal to 9.81 kilonewton, right? So we can write that this is 9.81 kilonewton, right? And similarly, we will have and then if we will consider this truss under consideration, so then we, what we need to do is that we need to consider the free body diagram, right? So for that, we need to remove these pulleys, right? So first I will remove, I will isolate this truss, right? So let me isolate it, let me remove this pulley, right? Since we have found the reactions due to this pulley on this given truss, right? So what I will do, I will isolate this, right? So now, uh, we will have dx reaction which is 9.81 kilonewton at this point D, right? This is that point D. Let me write it here. And then there will be a dy reaction in the opposite direction, right? So we will have this dy reaction. And this dy reaction is 19.62 kilonewton, right? Similarly, uh, again, the, the, at point C, we have one another pulley, so it is again subjected to external load. So then this pulley will have its own reaction due to that external load. And again, this pulley will apply the reaction forces on this truss as well, right? So again, we will consider the free body diagram for this, for this pulley. So this is that pulley at point C. And again, if I, if I represent all those forces, right? So since this uh, rope is again continuous and this rope is un is having tension of 9.81 kilonewton, right? So again, we will have the force on this pulley in the opposite direction, right? To this to this tension, right? So this is 9.81 kilonewton. And again, since this rope is continuous, so it will have again 9.81 kilonewton in this direction tension, right? So this is again I will write that this is 9.81 kilonewton and due to these uh, tension there will be reactions at this point C right on this pulley. So let's say that this is that point C. So now let's say that this is the reaction at point C in the x direction. So let's say this is Cx and there will be a reaction in the opposite direction. So let's say this is Cy right and now as we can see that mm, this rope is making 60 degrees right with the horizontal right so if i draw a horizontal line here right so if this rope is making 60 degrees here so then it is also making 60 degrees here right so now if i resolve this 9.8 kilonewton force into its components right so it will have one component in this direction it will have one component like this and it will have one component which will be acting vertically downward right and this is the cos component so i will write that this is 9.81 cos of 60 degree and this one is 9.81 sine of 60 degrees right so now if we apply the summation of forces on this pulley right in the x direction let's say that summation of forces along x equals to zero for this pulley right so then as we can see that this cos component is acting in the 
positive x direction so i will write 9.81 cos of 60 degrees similarly this cx is acting in the positive x direction so i will write cx this is acting in the negative x direction so i will write minus 9.81 kilonewton and this will be equal to zero right so from this we can write that cx is equal to minus 9.81 cos of 60 degrees plus 9.81 so if we calculate this this is minus 9.81 cos of 60 plus 9.81 so this is 4.905 right so we can write that it is approximately equal to 4.91 right so cx is equal to 4.91 kilonewton and similarly if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero so then as we can see that this cy is acting in the positive y direction so i will write cy and this sine component is acting in the negative y direction so i will write minus 9.81 sine of 60 degrees and this is equal to zero and from this cy equals to 9.81 sine of 60 degrees and this is equal to if we calculate this this is 9 9.81 sine of 60 degrees this is 8.45 let let me write it like this so this is 8 8.50 sorry right so this is 8.50 kilo newton so now we know these reactions due to these loads on on this pulley right so as a reaction this pulley will apply the opposite forces on this truss right so let me isolate this truss from this pulley so now this truss is subjected to cx and cy but in the opposite direction right so let's say that this is that reaction cx right so its magnitude is now known which is a 4.91 kilonewton right so we can write that this is 4.91 kilonewton and similarly this cy reaction right so it will be acting vertically downward and this is 8.50 kilonewton right so i will write 8.50 kilonewton right so now we know all the reactions on this section which we will consider right so if we pass a cutting section like this so then we will isolate this upper part of this given truss so now we can write that this is cb force this is cg and this is that fg force and similarly as we can see that uh, the majority of the forces are passing through this point c so then if we apply first the summation of moment about point c equals to zero so then we will be able to find this fg since only this fg is not passing through that point c right so let me apply the summation of moment about point c equals to zero and let's assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive so now as we can see that uh, this 9.81 kilonewton this reaction is also passing through this point c so it will not produce the moment about the point c only this 19.62 kilonewton force is not passing through that point c so it will produce the counterclockwise moment about that point c so i will write 19.62 and the perpendicular distance of this force this reaction from that point c is this three meters right so we will multiply this with three and this is producing counterclockwise moment so we will write plus and this fg is producing clockwise moment about that point c so we will write minus we will write fg and the perpendicular distance of this fg from that point c is this three meters right so we will multiply this with three as well right so this is equal to zero so from this if we divide this whole equation by three so we will be left with fg equals to 19.62 kilonewton and since this is positive so this means that the fg force the force in this fg member is in tension right so this is 19.62 kilonewton and this is the tension force so now we know this fg force right 
now if we apply the summation of moment about point g equals to 0 so as we can see that this fg and this cg both of these forces are passing through that point g so they will not produce the moment about that point g so then we will be able to find this cb force right so now if we assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive again so now as we can see that this 19.62 kN force is producing counterclockwise moment about that point g right so i will write 19.62 and the perpendicular distance of 19.62 kN is not known directly, right? So, first we have to find it, right? So, if I extend this DC member, right? So, if I extend this DC member like this, and if I complete a triangle here, right? So, the and let's say that this point is G dash, right? So, the perpendicular distance of 19.62 kN force from this point G is DG dash, right? So, I will write that this is DG dash, right? And now we can write that the perpendicular distance of this 19.62 kN is this DC length which is 3 meters and this CG dash. So I can write that this is, let me write it as CD member length plus CG dash length, right? Again, as we can see that this uh, 9.81 kN force is producing clockwise moment about that point G. So we will write minus 9.81 and the perpendicular distance of this 9.81 kN force from that point G is this GG dash, right? So, I will write GG dash. Similarly, as we can see that this 4.91 kN force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point G. So, again, I will write plus this is 4.91 and the perpendicular distance of this 4.91 kN from this point G is again this GG dash. So, I will write GG dash length, right? And as we can see that this 8.50 kN reaction force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write plus 8.50 and the perpendicular distance of this 8.50 kN force from that point G is this CG dash length, right? So, I will write CG dash and now we are left with this CB force, right? Since this CB force is also producing the counterclockwise moment about that point G. So, I will write plus, let me write it here, right? So, this will be plus CB and the perpendicular distance of this CB from that point G is this 3 meters length, right? So, I will multiply this with 3. So, I can write that this is plus 3 into CB right and this is again also plus this will be equal to zero right now to find this cb using this equation we need to have the cg member length right and we need to have this angle theta of this cg with the horizontal right so then we will be able to find this cg dash and cg right since cg dash is the cos component of cg so this will be cg cos of theta and similarly, G, G dash is the sine component of C, G. So, we will write that this is C, G sine of theta, right? So, we need to have C, G length and we need to have this angle theta, right? So, let's say that this angle is alpha and if we complete a triangle here, let me complete a triangle here, right? So, if I draw a triangle here, so, if we consider this triangle, let's say that this point is T, right? So, if we consider the CAT triangle, right, like this. So, this angle is given, this is 60 and this angle is 90 degree. So, if this angle is 60 and this is 90, so then this angle will be 30 degrees, right? So, this means that here we have 30 degree angle, right? And if we consider this CBG triangle, right, so... In the problem statement, this FG length is 3 meters, right? I can write that this FG length is given, this is equal to 3 meters and this CF length is 3 meters, right? So, from this we can write that this BG length is also 3 meters since it's a square and this CB length is equal to FG length, so this is 3 meters, right? So, again, if we complete a triangle here as well, if we consider this CBG triangle, so here we have 90 degree angle 
and this CB length is 3 meters and this BG length is 3 meters so this means that the opposite angles are also equal right so if this is 90 so then if this angle is alpha then this angle is alpha right so if this is 90 then this angle is 45 degree and then this angle is also 45 degrees right so this means that this that this angle is also 45 degrees right so I will write that this is 45 degrees as well right so now we can find this theta if we consider this angle right so as a whole this whole angle is 90 degrees right so we can write that 30 this 30 plus 45 plus this theta this is equal to 90 degrees and from this we can write that theta equals to 90 minus 45 minus 30 so from this equation theta equals to 15 degrees right so this theta is 15 degrees so now uh, once we know this 15 degrees then we have to find this cg so then to find this cg we can consider this cfg triangle so again this cfg triangle is right angle triangle right so here we have 90 degrees and this fg length and this cf length are equal so this means that we can apply the Pythagoras theorem since this is a right triangle, right angle triangle. So we can write that CG square is equal to CF square plus FG square. So this is 3 square. We can take the, to find CG length, we can take the square root. So if we take square root, so then this is we can write that this is 3 square plus 3 square so this is 3 square root 2 right so cg length is 3 square root 2 so now we can apply this equation right so we can write that this is 3 cb plus 19.62 cd length so this cd length is 3 meters so i will write 3 plus cg dash so cg dash is the cost component so i will write 3 square root 2 cos of 15 degrees minus 9.81 gg dash is the sine component of cg so we will write cg so cg is 3 square root 2 sine of 15 degrees plus 4.91 again gg dash so this is 3 square root 2 sine of 15 degrees plus 8.50 and cg dash again this is the cost component right so we will write 3 square root 2 cos of 15 degrees and this whole equation is equal to 0 so now if we simplify this so then this equation is like this so we can find this sum right so this is 139.26 minus 10.77 plus 5.39 plus 34.83 this is 168.71 so we can write that 3 cb plus 168.71 equals to 0 so from this cb equals to minus 168.71 divided by 3 so we can write that this answer divided by 3 so this is 56.24 right so we can write that this cb is equal to 56.24 minus and this is kilonewton right so this means that cb force is compressive force right so we can write that cb is acting towards that joint c so right let me write that cb is 56.24 kilonewton and this is compressive force now to find this cg member force what we need to do is that we will apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 for this cutting section right so as we can see that this this reaction is acting in the positive x direction so i will write plus 9.81 kilonewton Similarly, this 4.91 kilonewton is acting in the negative x direction, so I will write minus 4.91. Similarly, uh, 
this CG will have two components, right? So this CG member force will have one component which will be acting in the positive x direction and that will be the cos component, right? So we will write that this will be plus CG cos of 15 degrees, right? This time this CG is not CG member length, right? This is CG member force, right? So CG cos of 15 plus and again this CB will have two components, right? So again if we consider this CB force, so it is making 45 plus 15 degrees with the horizontal, right? So if I draw the CB force here, right? So this is the horizontal line and this is CB, right? And this is that point C this is CB right so the overall angle of CB is how much so this is 45 plus 15 so this is 60 degrees right so this CB will have two components it will have one component like this and it will have another component like this so this is the cost component right so this cost component of CB is acting in the positive x direction right so I will write plus CB cos of 60 degrees 45 plus 15 degrees is 60 degrees Similarly, this FG will have two components as well, right? So it will have one component in this direction and it will have one another component which will be acting like this, right? So this is the, if we need to have angle of this FG with the vertical or the angle with the horizontal, right? So we need to find this angle, right? So let me draw this triangle, right? So or let's say that this intersection point is, let's say, P, right? So if we consider this CFP triangle, let me draw it here. So as we can see that uh, this angle is 45 since it's a square, right? So if this is 45, then this angle is 45 and this angle is also 45, right? So as we can see that if this whole angle is 45 and this is 15 degrees, right? So then this small angle, this angle will be 45 minus 15, right? So this means that this angle is 30 degrees, right? So now this is that point F right and if I drop a perpendicular from this point F like this so as we can see that this is perpendicular with this line and this line is perpendicular with this line right so if the if the angle here is 30 degrees then this angle is also 30 degrees right so this means that this FG is making 30 degrees with the vertical right so we can resolve this FG force into its components right so then this will be one component of FG and this will be another component of FG. So if this angle is 30 degree and if this is FG, so then this is the cos component of FG and this is the sine component of FG, right? So we can write that this is FG sine of 30 degrees, right? So this is FG sine of 30 degrees and this is acting in the positive x direction. So we had, we had to include that sine component in this equation, right? So this is plus f g sine of 30 degrees and this is equal to 0 right so now we can write that this is 9.81 minus 4.91 plus cg is not known right so we will write cg cos of 15 degrees plus cb so cb is negative right so this is we can write that this is minus 56.24 cos of 60 degrees plus FG. So FG is known which is 19.62. So we will write 19.62 sine of 30 degrees and this will be equal to 0. So now when we simplify this, so then we get this equation and then we can write that this is C, CG cos of 15 degrees and, and the sum of this is equal to minus 13.41. So we will write minus 13.41 and this is equal to 0. So from this CG member force will be equal to right. So this will be positive 13.88 kilo Newton and since this is positive so this means that CG member force is tension force right. So it is uh, acting away from that point C right. So this is that CG member force, this is that CB member force and this is that FG member force right. So I hope you people would have understood this very difficult trust problem, right?